we're all here from the Open Census community. Uh, I work at Google, Sergey's from Microsoft, and Steve is from a stealth mode startup called Omniscient. Uh, we also have a few people in the audience. Uh, so we have some members of the uh, Open Census team here, uh, most notably Bogdan Drudu, who's the team mascot. Uh, and he's sitting over there. So, uh, we'll bring people up for questions at the end. Uh, so I'm guessing that most of you already know what Open Census is. For those who don't, Open Census is a set of instrumentation libraries. A uh, little bit more than that, but at its core, the, product is a, uh, the project is a set of libraries. These libraries allow you to extract uh, distributed traces and metrics from your applications. They take care of things like context propagation, uh, tag propagation, and basically all the things you need to do to get observability with distributed traces and metrics out of your app. Open Census is somewhat unique in the market. It's not just an API, it's an actual full implementation. So we maintain a single distribution of these libraries. There's one for Java, there's one for Node, there's one for C++, and so on, uh, so that we can ensure all of the functionality that you expect and need is there. One of the really interesting parts about Open Census is how you get the data to your back end. So as I mentioned, it's just a set of libraries. We don't do distributed trace analytics. We don't do metrics analytics like projects like Prometheus or Jaeger. We simply allow you to capture those, because that's a very difficult problem. Uh, so we have this concept in Open Census called exporters. Exporters are the way that you send the data from your application with Open Census to the, your back end of choice. So it's the way you collect traces. Uh, it's the way you pass on traces to something like Jaeger. It's the way you pass on metrics uh, to something like Prometheus. Uh, so if we have a sample microservices app, uh, in this case we'd be, we have the you know, front end service, payment service, card service, uh, and we're calling a database API. Uh, in this case, we have Open Census linked inside of our code for each of these services. It provides the APIs we need, and it has the instrumentation that will, in most cases, automatically capture traces, do context propagation, capture critical metrics. Uh, and by linking it there, traces will, be, uh, will capture traces from these request flows that go through our service. And then we'll send this data to our backends via these, the exporter interface that I mentioned earlier. One of the interesting things about exporters is, is that you can export to multiple backends at once. This means you can export to a tracing backend and a metrics backend. It also means that you can export to uh, multiple tracing and metrics backends at the same time. This is useful if you're evaluating a new uh, vendor or open source project that you're using as a backend. It's also useful if you have different teams who are using different tools. You can still get that full stack observability with uh, like Jaeger and Stackdriver, for example, or Prometheus and Stackdriver, for example. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Sergey. I'll switch back for a second. Um, you can count how many languages uh, this distributed app has, and like four, and it's uh, became a reality. And um, to build Open Census uh, SDK for all these languages is a tricky task. So. Um, Open Census, with Open Sense, we're doing that. And uh, I'm happy to tell that uh, for four languages, uh, Java, Golang, Node.js, and Python, we'll announce um, production readiness uh, this month. Uh, for all other languages, it's coming shortly after that. Uh, so what does it mean to build Open Census for a single language? We want to, feel, uh, we want to uh, make sure that it feels natural for you to code with Open Census on your language. At the same time, we want to preserve all the terminology and uh, all the look and feel of Open Census SDK across all the languages. So it's easy for you to switch back and forth. Um, we also strive for standardization across languages. So let's say your distributed trace goes from uh, one component to another component. You shouldn't know that like one component is Golang and other component.net. Uh, you just know that it will be correlated automatically. So you'll see telemetry um, from both components and it will be like magic, uh, magically uh, linked together. We also strive to standardize data we collect from all these uh, languages. Uh, I mean, it's not, uh, it, it became an increasingly important for you to do, uh, to know that you can go and uh, look at telemetry from application uh, code of, the, of which you don't know, because it may be like your dependent service, a service you, you depend on, and you are DRI and in the middle of the night, and you need to look at telemetry from, for, uh, for your sister team uh, application. And uh, we strive for standardization. I mean, this standardization is basically, you, you shouldn't worry about uh, setting an alert on uh, response code for HTTP for the application and language you don't know. It's a response code for HTTP. You, you shouldn't care. Um, uh, we, uh, we work on this API stabilization and uh, uh, testing for uh, many languages. And uh, one thing I want to talk about is integrations. 
This open census SDK, we want to make sure that you can express uh, your application pattern, uh, whatever you use in your application. Like it may be a simple REST call, or it may be fancy task synchronization with uh, Redis and database calls, and uh, you need to synchronize it all together. Or it may be some uh, highly efficient uh, queue-based RPC protocol between your component. And with open census, we want to make sure you can express all that uh, in a simple manner. And to enable that and uh, to make sure that we can do all these uh, integrations, we created um, automatic data collections for uh, technologies. Like for Java, for instance, we do support HTTP, GD, uh, gRPC, uh, GDBC, MongoDB, JT, serverless. Uh, with uh, stabilization of APIs and like announcement of them production ready, we expect way more integrations. And integration is easier to enable, like single gesture way to enable monitoring and uh, data collection from those components. So uh, what's missing on other languages? And um, in, oh, oh, it's big checkboxes. Uh, and <laughs> um, so on uh, opensensus.io, we track detailed map of uh, all the features uh, and uh, capabilities of every single language. So you can go check it out there. Here I show bird's eye view on what's enabled and what's supported. You can see that Metrics API is lagging behind. And it's not a surprise because Metrics API was just introduced recently. We're working on that with Open Metrics CNCF project. And uh, it just was introduced recently, and we already have integration for four languages. And uh, if you've been on uh, Morgan's presentation from last year, I want to emphasize how much progress we made over a year. Uh, I mean, this matrix was uh, no way uh, near that. And we made a commitment to make four languages uh, up to parity, like for um, all the main features, and we achieved that. So you see like all the checkboxes on four uh, columns are there. So um, while we're working uh, on feature parity on all other languages and treat it as a high priority, we also hear feedback that you need more signals for observability. And one of the biggest uh, feedback is you need logging. Um, so we start working on logging as well. Um, logs is very important observability signal. Uh, you need logs to troubleshoot, and it, logs are very easy to write, easy to collect, easy to consume, unless it's not. And uh, it's not because your application tend to become uh, more uh, complex, uh, high scale, and uh, consists of too many components that are written by different vendors. And it's all affect how you log. Uh, with the scale comes a cost. Uh, it becomes increasingly uh, costly to enable logs, so you turn them off. Uh, with uh, complex uh, business logic, you uh, have a hard time to navigate logs and make sense of like why this log m message comes after that log message. It doesn't make sense. Uh, and with increased number of components that you consume, uh, all the logs uh, look different, so you have a hard time to uh, correlate them and understand what's going on. So we have a plan to address all these problems. Uh, we will start with uh, correlation uh, of logs, and uh, today you already have uh, correlation and tags for distributed traces. Uh, pretty soon you'll be able to use the same correlation and tagging to group and uh, scope your logs. Um, then uh, we plan to address some uh, uh, problems with cost. Uh, with a collector, you will be able to do scenarios like um, uh, sending uh, only lo verbose logs for only distributed traces that had errors in them. And you can do it with retroactive sampling when you uh, cache all the information and then only send subset of information that is most important for you across all your components distributed uh, across multiple uh, languages. Then uh, we want to do uh, scenarios like uh, sampling based on verbosity of your logs. You, you may want to collect only 20% of informational logs and uh, errors and warnings all the time. That kind of scenarios we want to enable for you uh, to address cost issues, and uh, uh, that can be done on a open source agent or even directly in SDK. And then uh, lastly, uh, we will, uh, maybe it's a short, uh, longer term goal, but we want to provide better logging KPI so you can log uh, consistently and uh, responsibly. Uh, consistently means that, uh, I, I mean, our mean bar is very low. Like, uh, you, we want to make sure that computer name reported by one, com one system is a computer name reported by another system. So you don't, well, you can correlate those two computer names. Uh, what we want ultimately is to make sure that uh, we can help you mark uh, some um, log messages as a, uh, critical, like uh, containing password information uh, or other API information, like uh, personal identifiable information, like uh, IP address. So we can warn you that you're doing something, uh, something strange and you need to be very careful with that. Uh, 
Um, and um, going forward, we have more signals, like beyond logging, we have more ideas what needs to be introduced in open census and what needs to be standardized. And I keep saying standardization, standardization across languages, standardization with signals, standardization with uh, new ideas. And why standards are important is because we want uh, every library, every application, and every platform to take dependency op on open census and make sure that uh, observability comes out of the box with every component. And to do that, we need to uh, this uh, library writers to trust us and uh, make sure that it's a, it's a true standard. Uh, we have another project in CNCF doing the same thing, uh, doing uh, standardization across uh, distributed tracing. It's called Open Tracing. And I'm happy to tell that we already announced we're merging projects. Uh, this is a big deal. Uh, everybody was asking about uh, difference between open census and open tracing. There are differences, but uh, uh, it's better together. And this merger is not about one project. And this merger is about merging community of uh, uh, same-minded people who want to work together to build standards for monitoring and to make sure that uh, monitoring, uh, uh, you take monitoring for granted uh, when you deploy your application. Uh, it's a full merger. I mean, we'll announce new name for the project and uh, we'll announce end of life for all the libraries. And uh, all this announcement will probably come in Kubernetes, uh, Kubicon uh, Conference uh, Europe, end of May. Um, another announcement we want to make and uh, that uh, open sense community actually working on standardization in uh, external bodies like W3C. And uh, next Monday we target um, uh, declaring that uh, specification for trace context going into uh, candidate recommendation stage. Candidate recommendation is a stage when you can start using this uh, specification production. With that, um, I've been talking about uh, data collection, standardization, uh, and SDKs for a long time. And uh, we're not only making progress on that front, we're also making uh, a lot of progress on agent and collector side. And Morgan will talk more about that. Thanks, Dirk. Uh, so we've started talking the last few months about some additional components to Open Census. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, Open Census at its core, and certainly from the beginning of the project, is a set of libraries that you link to your application. But we have more today. So starting a few months ago, we began development of the Open Census Agent. This is an application that you can run on each of your VMs or run as a daemon set in Kubernetes that will collect traces and metrics from the Open Census libraries. So your libraries will export them to the Open Census Agent, and which in turn will then re-export them to your backend of choice. One of the big, big benefits of the Open Census Agent is that you can choose and change your exporters to your backend without having to redeploy your app. Uh, this is particularly big for platforms, so certainly inside of Google. Uh, for GKE, if we wanted to use Open Census to show traces and metrics that come from the GKE platform itself, this was a requirement. We're not, we don't have customers rebuild Kubernetes for themselves. Uh, but it's also useful for your own applications, right? It's generally pretty annoying with Open Census or even Open Tracing, which, which Sergey mentioned. Both of them today require you uh, to recompile, rebuild, redeploy your app to change exporters. With the agent, you no longer have to. The second thing we have is the Open Census Collector. This is based off of the agent. It's, in some sense, a version of the agent that is running as a network service, typically a service inside of Kubernetes. The collector will work to uh, take in all the traces and metrics from your application. They'll be sent to the collector. Uh, and because they're all sent to that central source, in addition to allowing you to change your exporters uh, in real time like you can with the agent, the collector will also allow you to do things like tail-based sampling. And so that means instead of randomly sampling traces, you can choose to just send traces for high latency requests or requests of errors to your back end. This is a big, big deal for people who do distributed tracing because it means that, one, that sampling that a lot of customers do at 1% is suddenly much more effective. And Steve's going to do a demo of that in a few minutes. Um, now, cutting to my laptop, we also today are showing off a new feature of the Open Census agent that we haven't, we haven't presented before. Uh, so the Open Census agent, because it's running on every VM uh, or as a daemon set or Kubernetes, can also collect system metrics. This is something we just added right before the conference, but it's now there in the source code. And ah, it went to sleep. Uh, and so what we've got here is Stackdriver. This could be Prometheus. This could be any metrics backend. It would, it would effectively be the same. And we've got the Open Census agent running on a number of our VMs for the Hipster Shop demo app. Uh, and we're collecting uh, CPU time for system CPU time, user CPU time, uh, idle time, uh, and information about all the processes running on those machines. This is coming from the Open Census agent. It's collected direct directly from, the, from that machine. 
or and from those machines, actually, there's multiple. Uh, this is a big, big vision into where we're going to be in a few months of the Open Census Agent. Our goal, our, our plan, is to also have it uh, be a great place to collect si all the system metrics that you need from things like CollectD, StatsD, and so on. And so w by deploying this Open Census Agent to each of your VMs, by deploying, by pushing out the Open Census libraries to each of your applications, you can now get uh, application telemetry and system telemetry that are correlated and sent to your back end of choice. This is pretty easy to deploy. Uh, I'm not going to go into depth, but what I can show you here is the exporter configuration. So this is inside one of the services that already has the Open, the open Census library linked to it. You simply configure the Open Census agent exporter, point it at the agent. And then we have a YAML file that deploys the Open Census agent as a daemon set. It's really, really simple. This, the images are already pre-baked, so you can just use them. And it unlocks a ton of powerful functionality that we haven't had before. We switch back to the slides. And with that, I'm going to give you Steve. He's going to give you a great demo of the uh, Open Census agent and collector. Thanks, Morgan. All right, so we talked a lot about Open Census. There's different pieces here. We have the client libraries. We have the Open Census service. So now I actually want to demonstrate how you can leverage this power. Let's start with the client libraries. So first, let's assume I want to instrument an application. I'm going to use a Java application here. And I know it's early, so we'll walk through this line by line. You don't have to try to figure it out. Uh, but how would you go ahead and add instrumentation to your code so you can take advantage of, let's say, distributed tracing in this case? So first, you need to instantiate a tracer. Basically, this allows you to manipulate and add additional metadata about the types of interactions between your microservices or even your function level calls. Next, you need to export this to a backend. It doesn't matter what backend that is. Here I'm using Zipkin. It can be any exporter destination. I'll talk about the ones that are supported by Open Census in a little bit. Next, you determine your sampling policy. By default, Open Census samples 1 in 10,000 traces. If you want to do something uh, less aggressive, you can do that. In this case, for, for demo purposes, I'm sampling everything. Uh, clearly, at scale, that may not make sense. But for the purposes of demonstrations, that's pretty straightforward. Those three lines are really the only things that you need to configure globally for each of your languages. So in the case of Java here, I can go ahead and throw this into my common library and then reuse it across my application stack. Then all I really need to do is add the instrumentation to the calls that I'm making between my services. Now, for demo purposes, there is a sleep in here. That's because there's actually batching being done. And if you don't wait long enough, you wouldn't actually see the traces. Uh, that's why it's here. But in your application, you clearly wouldn't have that. And then finally, here's how you get a trace. Right? Here's the root span, for example, of a call coming in. You can do the exact same thing to create a child span as well. So for each of your function calls, or at least between your microservices calls, you can go ahead and add instrumentation, and that can help you stitch together a trace. It's really that easy. right? There's not much to it. Uh, in addition, you can enhance these logs or enhance these traces with additional pieces of metadata, like logs. So if you wanted to, for example, if there was an error stack, maybe of a, a Java stack trace that you want to include, you can embed that into the span. When you're creating the span, you can say, if there's an error, go ahead and tack on that, that log message as well. You can also add rich metadata, like key value pairs. So you could add things like, what region is this service deployed in? What version of the code is it running? And you can use this metadata uh, to actually get some rich insights out of the data. And I'll show that in a second. So that's it from a client library perspective. Clearly, it would be different if you're using Go or Node or what have you. But there's good documentation we have on OpenCensus.io to help get you started. If you already have your own instrumentation, that's fine as well, because the Open Census service actually supports a wide variety of formats today. So as Morgan was talking about, the Open Census service is really made up of two different components, the OC agent and the OC collector. And you can choose to use one, either, both, or neither. It's really up to you. It comes down to your business requirements. Uh, so here, I can, I'm showing kind of some different topologies of how you might deploy this. Uh, the OC agent can actually de be deployed with your application as a binary. It can be deployed as a sidecar if you're using Docker. It can be deployed as a daemon set if you're in the Kubernetes world. The collector is a standalone application. It can handle aggregation of this data as well. And of course, you have the OC client library, which you can use as well. Now, it doesn't matter how you mix and mingle this. Like, for example, as Morgan was talking about, you have different backends. Here I have Zipkin, Prometheus, and Omniscient. All right, well, maybe I don't want to use Zipkin anymore. I want to switch over to Jaeger. It's just a configuration change. Everything else handles, is handled automatically. Maybe I don't want to use the OC library because I already have instrumented in Jaeger. No problem. Jaeger can, is accepted by the agent and the collector as well. 
Let's say that I don't want to use the agent. I just want to send directly to the collector. That's fine. I don't want to use the collector. I only want to send to the agent. That's fine. But at the end of the day, we would recommend leveraging all the different components because they provide different value adds. But you can choose to piece, th piece this together however makes sense for your environment. Now, some of the values provided here with the Open Census service, you now only have to support a single exporter destination. So for example, if I'm using the OC client libraries, I can export and just go, and I'm all set. I don't have to worry about writing that in Java and Node in different languages. That makes it much easier, one thing to maintain, one exporter. That's really nice. In addition, I can change my backend whenever I want. After I've instrumented and I've sent to the Open Census service, it's a configuration change to send my data to a different location. Whether I want to replicate it, so I send to two different backends, or I want to switch backends, all that translation is handled automatically for you in the Open Census service. And the collector actually offers some advanced functionality. For example, intelligent or tail-based sampling. The only open source solution today that actually has that built in. Uh, redaction support, so you can actually strip away tags if for whatever reason there's information there that you don't want to be sharing. You can tack on additional metadata, like region information. Maybe you don't want to add that into your application itself. You could actually do it from the collector and actually say all spans that are being received from this collector should have this region tag. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility here depending on the requirements that you're trying to uh, meet. And, and really, the Open Census Service is about universal support. So here are just a few of the different types of receivers and exporters that are supported today, a wide range. And this Open Census Service is extremely flexible. You can actually add more, and more are being added all the time. So it doesn't matter whether you don't see your logo up here, it can be added. Uh, and you'll be able to transform into and out of these different formats. So receivers are how you get data into the system, so either into the agent or into the collector. Exporters are how you get data out of the system. So all this translation is handled for you automatically, making it a truly vendor agnostic solution. Now, one thing you might be thinking about is, OK, let's say I'm using the collector. What about scale? Does this thing actually scale? Uh, the answer is yes. We actually have performance numbers on the Open Census Service uh, GitHub page that you can take a look at. Uh, but as an example, uh, we uh, have been testing it at significant scale. For example, 17.3 billion spans a second. That's equivalent to about 200,000, or 17.3 billion spans a day, my bad, uh, which is equivalent to about 200,000 spans a second. That roughly accumulates to 57 terabytes of data. These were 3.3 kilobyte spans. Span sizes can vary anywhere from, like, say, 1 to 200 bytes up to maybe 10, 11 kilobytes, depending on the number of tags or the rich metadata that you've added there, uh, with no drops. And this was on a single collector. So typically, we're seeing about 10,000 spans per second for 1.2 cores of compute. Uh, and this does scale linearly. So you can make it as small or as large as you want. Another reason why you might consider the collector, I talked a little bit about intelligent sampling, and Morgan mentioned it as well. So there's a, a notorious problem, if you will, with tracing, and that is it's, it's extremely verbose. This is very similar to logging, uh, but there's no verbosity level in tracing. So you have a couple of options of how to deal with this. You can either try to collect all of it. At scale, that can be very hard. Uh, Head-based sampling is very common. Basically, when you're about to create the initial root span, you make a sampling decision on whether or not you want to actually sample that request or not. The problem with head-based sampling is that you don't actually know what's going to happen downstream. You're making the decision at the entry point. So for example, maybe the root span is fine, but there was an error down the stack. You won't know if you didn't actually sample that trace. Tail-based sampling takes the opposite approach. It basically says, let me collect the entire trace and then make a sampling decision. So you can actually do some pretty cool things. You can say, I only want to sample error traces. If any of the spans contain an error, let's sample that. Uh, you can do tag-based. So you can look for certain metadata in these spans or in these traces and then make a sampling decision based on that. Or my personal favorite, you can do something like retrieval-based. So you can actually say, let's make a sampling decision. Let's assume that a trace was not sampled. And then your back end can say, hey, actually, I do need that trace. Do you still have it? And it can actually ask the collector for it and pull it out and actually make sure that it does get ingested or ensure that it's ingested going forward. We actually have a, a, a demo of this that you can go ahead and take a look at. It's all available on the GitHub page. So it's actually a Docker Compose. And I want to walk through that real quick with a demo, which I hope will show up well on the screen here. Let's take a, oop. Oh. Did we switch? It's still part of the slide deck. It's still part of the slide deck, yeah. Can we switch back? Perfect. And let's try. All right. 
actually looks pretty good on a big screen. I like this. Uh, so here is the tail-based sampling demo. Basically, it's a Docker Compose file. It's made up of a configuration file to deploy the Docker containers. Here, there are going to be two different Jaeger instances. And then it has the configuration for the Open Census service. So we're basically configuring two different destinations, one to receive only error traces, and the other to receive both error and non-error traces. So we can go ahead and fire this up. You can run this locally on your system. You can deploy this into your public cloud of choice. It doesn't matter. Uh, it will spin up a Cassandra instance with different key spaces for the two Jaeger instances. It'll fire up Jaeger. And then in the open census world, we use this hipster demo shop. And there's actually a load generator utility that will go ahead and send in traces from the hipster demo shop uh, and send that into the open census service, which will then handle the splitting of the traffic for you automatically. It takes a few seconds to get spun up here, and then you can go ahead and navigate to 17,000 and 18,000. That's the two different Jaeger instances. So the first one receives all of the traces, all the spans that are being received. So here we can take a look at that cart service, and you can see that there are spans coming in, but there are no errors up there. And if we look at 18,000, and again we go look at the cart service, you'll see that we only see error traces. That's because we have tail-based sampling enabled. And we basically said we want only traces that contain errors to go to one destination. We want everything to go to the other. It's very simple, very easy to configure with a YAML-based configuration. All right, one more quick demo. So let's tie this all together. We have our client libraries. Pretty easy to get instrumented and started. Or if you already have your existing instrumentation, you can leverage that. We talked about the Open Census service and how it's easy to kind of get data in and change it into different formats so you can switch different backends or take advantage of adv more advanced functionality, such as tail-based sampling. Uh, but what is really the power of the data that you get on the other end? Now, Open Census is more than just distributed tracing. It's also metrics. It's also logs. Uh, but I'm going to show an example with distributed tracing because that's very powerful in the cloud-native world. With microservice-based architectures, uh, it's really critical to kind of understand how your system is behaving. And so just looking at individual symptoms is typically not sufficient. You want context and correlation, and that's what distributed tracing can provide for you. So we've talked a little bit about the Hipster Demo app. If you haven't seen it before, here's kind of a visual representation of it. Every rectangle here represents a different service. It's actually a polyglot architecture. So every one of these boxes is written in a different language. This is available on GitHub, so you can actually take it for a spin and try it out. Uh, and basically, we want to demonstrate what a request flow through this system might look like. So if you've ever used a distributed tracing tool, let's say Zipkin or Jaeger, uh, then you may be familiar with something similar to this. It's just uh, an actual trace. So you can actually see the different calls through a single request here. Here you can see coming into the front end, hitting the checkout service, payment service, a few other services. So now I know the calls that were made for a certain request into my system. I also get some information about the duration of how long those different operations took. That can be useful from a performance standpoint. And for each of these, as they're known as spans, you actually have rich metadata. So you can drill into it, and you can uh, get information about what that call did. So in the case of like RPC or REST calls, you might be get, get the status code. Uh, I talked about tacking on metadata to the collector. So here, you, for example, you can see region information. Maybe you have build information about your version that you can tack on as well. Uh, you can kind of control how much rich information you want to include in these spans. Uh, but you can also do some more interesting things with distributed tracing. And for that, I want to show one more demo. All right, so let's start here. I'll pause it first. So here is the hipster demo app again. This is built purely from distributed traces. So if you're in receiving traces from Zipkin or Jaeger or the Open Census client library, just distributed tracing information, you can go ahead and construct the hipster demo shop. And this is what it would look like visually. And you can see the different calls that are happening. And if there are errors or problems with them, they kind of clearly stand out. You can also get information about the back end databases or any other platform services that you're leveraging. Now, for this particular example, let's assume that you're hearing that the recommendation service and production is having problems, and you're being asked to go ahead and investigate it. So let's go ahead and do that using only distributed tracing information. So I can go ahead and actually click on the recommendation service, and I can get some rich information about the requests that are being made here. And I see a lot of red. That's probably bad. But there's high cardinality in my data. Let me go ahead and break it down by the different environments I have. 
Well, now I can see that, yes, only production has errors. Stag and development is fine. I can see that for my different regions, they're both receiving errors. That doesn't give me much information. But I can also see that a certain build number, build 235, that is the one that is experiencing issues. So very quickly, I can go and say, I have a bad build here. I need to go roll that back. It's impacting my environment. That's all with just distributed tracing data, not with metrics, not with logs. That provides some rich correlation and context and a rich way to actually divide my data up. And I can actually take this distributed tracing information, and let's say with the logging spec that Sergey was talking about, you can tack on information like the trace ID and the span ID, and now I can actually say, for a given trace, show me all the logs for that request. Or from a given log, go ahead and show me the topology of how that actually looks from a call perspective in my environment or my application. It's very powerful, and all this is enabled through Open Census. All right, so call to action. No presentation would be complete without one. Please join us. There's a lot to do in the Open Census community. There are plenty of client libraries that we would love your help on, the Open Census service. Uh, we have several GitHub issues open. They're usually pretty well labeled with help wanted or good first issue. Or if you're interested in contributing back, please go ahead and join us on Gitter. Uh, we have a Gitter community where we actually talk about Open Census publicly. And uh, if you're interested in trying more of the intelligent sampling, that's available as well. All that is on uh, GitHub. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Morgan. Thanks, Steve. That's fantastic. Uh, so obviously, Open Census is an open source project. Uh, it's a big one. It has some heavy hitters in it. Uh, Google created the project. We're one of the biggest contributors. Microsoft's a huge contributor, as is Omniscient. Uh, big, big growing community. Uh, I'd be remiss to uh, forget about Postmates. They developed the entire Erlang library. Uh, they make a ton of other big contributions. And there's a ton of other smaller contributors. I sort of, when I was making this slide, I was a little worried. Like, I don't want to leave out any of the smaller contributions from other groups. These are just the sort of the, the organizations that have committed the most code. We obviously have a lot of support for exporters and backends that you can send data to with Open Census. Most of those are maintained by their respective bodies. Datadog contributed an exporter for Datadog. Uh, I think Honeycomb built their own and so on. Uh, some of them were built by the Open Census community, but it's a, a, you know, a big, big, diverse ecosystem. What we're excited about today is announcing that another big company has promised to make large contributions to the project. Uh, and so joining our, our, us at this conference and, and joining the Open Census project is Dynatrace, one of the world's biggest, I think the world's biggest, uh, APM vendor. And to talk about that, we have uh, Alois Reitbauer. Yeah, hello. Uh, I'm Alois uh, Reitbauer from uh, Dynatrace. I'm leading out. Uh, that's not a slide, but, but it's, yeah, it looks good, though. Yeah, I'm leading open source initiatives here at uh, Dynatrace, and yeah, we I think we had our first conversation about a year ago, and interestingly, very much from the beginning, I think we have we're on the same um, on, on the, had the same ideas on how we sh this should evolve, and that we should really all collaborate around collecting trace data, and that we all have like our own backends that provide our own uh, benefits to our customers, and also for us at Dynatrace, well, a couple of years back we started to focus more on AI and analytics. Um, obviously having the data input data, and we want to give all our customers also the flexibility to augment their data with what you can get via Open Census. And I think the next slide. Ah, yeah, thank you. So this is actually a preview that I have taken directly out of our development process here. What you can see here is actually Dynatrace, is actually Open Census data in Dynatrace. So we're now on weekly calls with uh, the Open Census team with respectively uh, Google and uh, Microsoft here, uh, where our focus is really that we provide uh, open census data as first class uh, citizens within Dynatrace, and also also providing our input, especially around tight span builders to high level APIs for open census. 